what is going on YouTube and welcome back to day number 10 of 100 days to become a Python master. Now in day number nine, at the very end, if you recall, uh, let me go back to this. I did figure out what that bug was per se. It wasn't so much a bug. I mean, the program's doing what it's supposed to do. It was more my screw up. Um, yeah, we're executing through that. So what happened was uh, we wanted to write a program iterating from zero to 50. And if it was a multiple of three, print super. If it was a multiple of five, print badass. If it's a multiple of three and five, print super badass. But when it printed those words, those strings, we didn't want it to print the number. It was replacing it. Um, but what happened was, if you look at this, it did one, two. When I got to three, it printed super, so it was appropriate. But then it also printed the number three. Um, when it got to five, it printed badass because five modulo five is zero. So it printed badass, but then it also printed the five. We didn't want to print the numbers if we were replacing it. So what happened was the reason for that, if you look at the code here, I had three separate if statements. So they, and they were indented the same. So it's going to run, if it ran to this one, it got false. If it got, even if it got true. So let's say, let's take three as an example. So it says if three modulo three equals zero true, print super. It would then go to this, which is false, this, which is false. And then it would print this, which was true. If I want to avoid it, if I want to tell the program, out of all of these three if statements, if one of them is hit, go back to the beginning of the for loop, all I had to do is change this from if to elif, which is like else if, essentially. So if, else, if, this, else, if, this. So now, when I run it, it's going to say, uh, if three modulo three is zero, print super, that's true. And then it's going to say, I don't need to go to else if, because I met true. I don't need to go to else if, which means I'm not going to get to else. It's going to go back to moo moo. So let's run it. Let me put in my whatever I want to reverse for the beginning part of the code. And here I am. So now you'll see we have one, two, super, four. Didn't print a three anymore because we, we, we got out of the loop once we hit a true portion of the statement. Four, we're not printing five because we have an else if for five. We're not printing six because we have an else if that matches uh, for six, which is three. Seven, eight, nine is going to be an, uh, 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 the if that matches with three. Uh, 10 is going to be the if that matches with five. Uh, 14 is going to be the one that matches for, uh, do, 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 where am I with three and five? Super, super, super badass, super badass. So what I could have done if I wanted this one to go, let me see something. Not at all what I wanted. Oops, a daisy. So now, screwing everything up here. So now you have the appropriate code if you were going to run that um, without getting the, the mishap that we had before. So let's close number nine and let's go to 10, but I do need to quickly get this loaded in the interpreter. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to put my stopper and we'll run the debug of 10 and I want to go to console. Awesome. Now, so far for today, so we're going to take two digits and we're labeling those as M and N, M and N, which is representing a row and a column respectively as inputs and generate a 2D array. You'll recall we did something similar to, similar to this before. Uh, the element value in the ith row and the jth row, a uh, jth column of the array should be I times J. Now that's going to seem very confusing to you at first. After you go through the code, go back to it and read that. It'll make sense to you. So we have row number equals an integer, and we're asking for the input of how many rows. So how many rows we're going to put, let's say we put three. It's going to have that integer as the input for the row. And then, so let's do it. We'll hit three, enter. I'm going to F8. How many columns? We'll say four, enter, F8. So now we have in our variables for row number, column number, three and four respectively. And just like we saw last time, do, 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 do. We have three rows, one, two, three, with four columns in each one. Four row, is this identical? This is identical, isn't it? Yeah, this 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 example that I have here is literally identical. So we're gonna get, let me go, let me look at the variables as we go through this. So looking at, yeah, the code is identical. See how good you'll get in a moment? You're gonna see this, let me give you the space. As I go through, it's going to be three. It's going to be zero, two, four, six, and then we'll go through that code. All right. So, hey, I told you you'd be doing some of the stuff over again. So we'll skip that one for now. Not skip it. I mean, write it, do it. You should be doing it anyway because we're doing the previous days beforehand as we go through this. 
Next, we are going to, uh, this one is with one difference to one that we had done before, write a program that accepts lowercase, um, and then as an input and prints the line as an output using uppercase. We had done this before as the input was lowercase and we wanted to make it all uppercase. So this example, we will reverse it. We will lower for the self. So I'm gonna F8 through this. Stop hitting F set F6. So F8, so we have an empty list. Going through while true, L is the input. It's asking for an input right now. You just don't see it because I didn't type anything. For, I didn't type a string to print with the input. So it's just asking for the input. So I'm gonna do all caps. This is all caps. Yo, enter. And I have my variable now, all capital letters. If L lines dot append, if L, L is true. Well, it's true. L is the input, lines append. Lines is the empty variable that I have above, append it. L, which is the, this is all caps, yo, and I want to lowercase it. So I'm going to uh, F8 it. While it's true and we stop. Ah, else break it. I see what I did. This is different than before. So let me do this. I'll keep it as upper because I printed as upper. So I print originally I had I printed it as uppercase and I had this as lower. And so that made this false. So when I went to false, then the else meant break. So then um, for L and lines, print the else. So I broke the code is essentially what I was doing, which I wanted to do. I want to put a break in if it was met. So that was exactly why that that stopped at that moment. Um, whoops, a daisy. No, I wanted a bug. F8, how many rows? We'll say three again, F4 again, and we'll iterate through all of that. And then it wants this. I'm gonna print it in all caps. This, nope, this is all caps. Now let's see, where are we? f 8 through, that's gonna be about as true. So then we can break the code. So this time we had upper and it was true. So then we were able to break the code because the while loop was now satisfied while it was true. It's true that they were all upper. Now, I don't have to worry about that. Print a program which accepts a sequence of comma separated four digit binary numbers as its input and print the numbers that are divisible by five in a comma separated sequence. Am I on 10 here? I am. I just want to run, I want this to run through the generator as well. Whoops. print L. How the hell did I? So those are all true. I'm stuck there. I'll have to figure that out. I'm print the numbers of those by five in a sequence. So back on this again, you don't get, let me comment this out because it's Rowan, the last example that's down there. You not we're defining uh, what we want to be called what we're calling um, dividable binary. Um, Got to make sure everything matches. We're defining what we want to call dividable binary, and we're giving it an s as an, as the variable, asking for an input input enter the binaries that we want to use. The, um, then we're having a new variable L and we're taking S and we're making sure that it's split by commas. And then for I in L, so for each element that's in this, which was just the split version of what we put into the, as the entering the binaries of the input. Um, again, whenever you see these multiples, go from the inside out. So what we're doing is we're taking all of this, a string of I here, which is going to be each of the elements that we're putting in, comma two. If it's if that string modulo five is equal to zero, print the output. Print the string output, comma i, and i is going to be whatever that value is, whatever that binary is that we put in. And then at the very bottom here, if we didn't have this line here, dividable binary, 
it would never execute this code because we never called it. So we have to make sure we're calling it or we're not going to get anywhere. So to enter a binary, let's put in um, zero, four digit binaries it wants. Four, three, one, that, we'll do that, we'll do that. And I'll hit enter. So output, based on what it's giving me here, it's if you if you go through the code, it has to do with if it's modulo five or not. So if modulo five equals zero, based on what we have as our input here, it is uh, based on each of these inputs from one, two, three, and four. It's not going to do anything. If it's met as true, then it will print which one of those meets this condition in the if loop for each one of the inputs that we put in. So out of one, two, three, four, the only input that met our condition was the four digit binary 0101, zero, one, zero, one. meaning when I did 0101 zero, one, zero, one, module 5, I did not get zero. I got a remainder. All right, guys, uh, that will be it for today. Uh, today is the 10th day of 100 Days to Master Python. Um, again, as you can notice, I know it's only 35, 35 lines of code, but each day that we're going forward, we're going to have more and more of these lessons. Um, I'm sorry that one of the first one of this, number 10, and day 10, it cl very closely resembles a previous exercise, and same thing with the uppercase, lowercase. Um, so just some redundancy is good for you for learning, but I do want to make sure that each day we're doing this, we're doing newer, fresher stuff uh, that kind of takes what we've learned previously and builds on it to making bigger, better programs. Uh, so still go through this, practice this, and don't forget to at times go back and do day one, two, three, four, five, working yourself up to the current day. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. Check out the other playlists as well. We're going to be adding soon Minecraft with Python. We're going to be adding the definitive guide to Pandas, which is utilizing for data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, as well as um, uh, TensorFlow, now that we have our GPU back uh, with the with the AIO cooler, uh, rocking that bad boy out. So take it easy, play with the code, break the code, fix the code, and come back for another day. Tomorrow we will have day 11 of 100 days to Python Mastery.